This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and today I want to go through something that I learnt um, the hard way, kind of. Well, I learnt it, and then it took me a long time to really kind of apply it. But um, seven years ago, or seven more, seven and a half years ago, when I started the business um, that is that is Functional Fitness Australia here in Canberra, and uh, was then known as just as Funk Fitness Australia. I was a sole trader. It was me and six clients. I'd already worked in the industry for. Uh, something like six or seven years anyway and I was um, super amped like ready to hustle my face off and uh, and off I go doing the work and all that sort of stuff which is all well and good and I was reading Tim Ferriss's book The 4 Hour Work Week um, and I remember reading it on the start of my second week it was the start of my second week and in that in a particular page he uh, I can't remember the exact I mean I have it here I could probably pull it apart and find it but I'll, maybe I'll do that another time but either way it went on to say effectively be careful being busy instead of being productive like be careful confusing those two things and I remember sitting there and I was like I'm actually that's what I'm doing I'm just doing things I'm just doing things to fill the time I was used to working 15 hour days in my last job uh, for the last gym that I worked at and so I'm sitting here going well I'll just make sure I do that in my own business but I actually wasn't doing anything I was just doing things right I was doing some things but I was never actually achieving anything I wasn't being productive as in producing something I was just busying myself and this is something that I found to be like so common later on especially in stressful times is that I would I would almost like get ahead of myself and do all these things and at the same time do nothing now if you've done the Enneagram I've talked about it a fair few times before if you've done it and you come up as a type 7 you might relate to some of this stuff a lot more than the others um, but you keep in mind you, you know if the 7 is your top 3 that's a variable right either way it's like with the things that you do there's, there's two prongs to this conversation one is the busy and productive and the other one is are you avoiding doing the important things and why would that be so let's look at the busy versus productive is like i learned later on it was actually more so in the last year that if you if i had four hours of work to do let's say six hours of work to do give or take and i was given four hours i'd kind of squeeze it in and i'll get it done right now if I had six hours of work to do and I had 12 hours then it would take me 12 hours to do those six hours of work and I was like well maybe there's a better way to do this and so what I started doing was creating better structure for myself and especially because I was the kind of person who is enthusiastic and wants to focus on multiple things I had to be very careful to still have my my attention on a couple of things but be very diligent about what exactly I had my attention on. And so it's the kind of thing that if, if you're the person that goes, nah, I only focus on one thing and that's all I do until it's done, that's great, that's good. And that's another conversation because sometimes people will do that only with things they know they can achieve and they never take risks. This is on the Enneagram Type 6 often behavior. Alas, but what I'm getting at there is going, these sort of, I suppose, interesting attributes of individuals is simply just going and bringing it back to our awareness to be able to go okay am i doing things just for the sake of making myself feel good for doing things because i don't want to stop and let my thoughts be or because i feel like if i'm doing something then i'm being productive but when you look at the word productive you've got to look at the question am i actually producing a result and if the answer is no then you're not being productive you're just being busy you're being busy busying and this is what's really interesting you speak to somebody like how has it been yeah everything's been busy it's like dude every fucking person is busy every person has their calendar back to back and so at the start of the year what i what i ended up doing was simply putting with those say hypothetically six hours of work is that i kept my whole morning open i keep that for my creative work now of course i have the ability to do this i mean sometimes i'll have sessions that i run in the morning at 5 30 sometimes i'll have um, appointments phone calls to people in the states or something like that at 9 a.m or something along those lines but most of the time four out of five days or even you know like nine out of five days a fortnight, I will have that morning somewhat free so that I can read, I can study, I can definitely take time for me, I can slow down, I can write the things out that are in my mind that I know that I need to focus on, I can journal and I can do all of those things and then by about 
somewhere between 11 a.m. to midday is when I get onto all my other task orientated stuff. And the biggest, that was one of the biggest changes for me. And what I ended up doing was actually going, okay, it, and this is a goal setting framework that I use. It's called 135. It's like, okay, what's your A1 goal? If you could achieve that goal and you can do this for a day, a week, or a month, or a year, 10 years, if you could only achieve one thing that sort of like made everything else redundant and made you feel like you achieved something, what would that be? And then what are the three things that support that one goal? And then what are five like in sort of instantaneous goals that you can kind of achieve and tick off as you go through? And sometimes that can be literally like eat lunch. Sometimes it can be things that you can do there and then. I've got to call mom. I've got to call this. I've got to do that. And so those sorts of things become crucial. Um, however, it allows you to really focus your attention on what is the one thing I can achieve today or what is the one thing I can achieve this week and what is the one thing I can achieve this month and then what is the one thing this year, etc., etc., etc. Because what a lot of people end up doing is that they overestimate what they can do in uh, a day and underestimate what they can do in a week. They overestimate what they can do in a week and underestimate what they can do in a month. Overestimate in a month, underestimate in a year, overestimate in a year, underestimate in 10 years you can see that process so what it was for me was recognizing that i had all this energy that i that i really wanted to push towards something that was important to me however i wasn't allowing that energy to be direct towards something that was actually producing a result that made me feel fulfilled and so that's where i went what is the one thing i can do and i started off this way what is the one thing i can do this week that if i was to achieve this week it's like great what are the things that i need to do each day to be able to do that and I would focus on one task a day that I had one big task a day that I had to do and all of a sudden I started doing five big tasks a week now one big task is like, that's not very much it's like yeah, yeah but that's like 250 big tasks a year over the space of 10 years that shit adds up and that adds up exponentially right and so that was one of the biggest things I started to do is like okay what are the one thing that I don't really want to do that I know I should do and I'm going to sit down and do that today just the one not all not the whole list of shitty things that I've been avoiding for three years what's one what's the biggest one that i know will make an impact or what's one that i could do that i would do all the way around would do that i could do right then and that's what i'd sit down and, and work through that and so that was something that i got around going busy versus productive am i actually producing or am i just busying myself now if you're the individual for example that is does like lists and schedules and just one list rather not seven different books with lists in them that's your type seven again um the a list and ticking things off and as you go that's great that's good just my recommendation this is probably for another podcast so my recommendation for you is just be careful that you you don't look back on your life knowing that you tick boxes to the graveyard because life is more than ticking boxes because that's not actually achieving things necessarily. Some people it could be, but sometimes people are just ticking boxes and they feel like they're achieving something. Then they look back on their life and realize they never actually achieved what they wanted to achieve. So be careful using the ticking boxes, um, being productive as a, a confusion for, for being fulfilled and achieving something. And so often I've seen people go and they just, just work and they feel good about it but later on, they look back and they're like, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. And it's like, yeah, because you're so busy fucking ticking boxes in the short term for short term gratification of feeling like you're achieving something, but long term you're not. And it's crushing you. I can see it. So that's my recommendation around that. Just be mindful of those two things. But really when it comes down to is, are you producing something or are you just being busy? Team, that's it. I'm out. Thank you very much for your attention. As always, if you found this podcast beneficial it would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial um, now as I mentioned before we have Mood Prep Online which is an online group for the podcast it's nine bucks a month you get on there I have Q&A's once a month I also put in extra content um, you get to ask my guest questions when I have musings you also have to input into my actual podcast itself you get all my events in there they go in there first um, and yeah, more exciting things coming up as always. I really appreciate your support guys. I really appreciate all the messages when you guys reach out and let me know and when you share and you tag me, it means the world. So that's it. Until next time, peace and pizza, kick today in the dick, slay the dragon. I'll see you soon.